If you thought waking up on a Monday morning was the worst way to wake up, imagine waking up and being on a deserted island with a crazy woman who won't stop singing to you. While she sings, we'll tell you all the secrets of Link's journey on Koholin Island. So sit back and hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notifications. These are 25 incredible secrets of the Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. Maybe you didn't notice because you were resting on your oars, but almost every Zelda the game starts with Link sleeping, whether it's in his bed, on the beach, or in a hot tub. Link's Awakening takes this literally, being actually a metaphor for the hero waking up and preparing for a new adventure. Make no mistake, Link's greatest enemy isn't Ganon, it's the Kukos. This powerful enemy has been able to finish off even the Demon King in some games. In Link's Awakening, if Link hits a Kuko several times, it and his 500 friends will come and attack the protagonist massively. But that's not the worst of it. If we're with Marin, she'll be the one who encourages you to hit them with words like, Do it! Do it! Do it more! In Link's Awakening for the Nintendo Switch, there's a house where you can create your own dungeon, and it's run by this guy here. Does his face look familiar? Well, it should because it's Dampe, Kakariko's gravedigger in Ocarina of Time, who has more exciting hobbies than gravedigging here. Zelda and Super Mario worlds have never been close, but Link's Awakening is an exception. As this game is supposed to be a dream, we can find enemies like Goombas, Piranha Plants, Bloopers, Pokey, or buzzy beetles that come from the Mario world. There are also cheap cheeps, boos, and even lava drops. Shy guys, some angry bobombs, and thwomps couldn't miss this game too. And don't be fooled because Marin's father is uncannily similar to Super Mario without his cap. Moreover, the guy in charge of the Kukos looks like Luigi, so I guess they must have sneaked into the game. <laughs> You have to become a messenger in one of the side quests of this game. So original. We'll have to take a letter to Mr. Wright sent by Christine the Goat. This letter includes a photo. Although it comes out, she's a bit different in it because it is a portrait of Princess Peach signed with Christine's hoof. We would like to remind you that impersonation is a crime and Christine the Goat can end up in prison for trying to flirt with photos that are not hers. Introducing the ultimate combo of the Zelda series, the Bomb Arrows. Do you want to take down a powerful enemy? Bomb Arrow. Do you want to break down a wall but you're too lazy to move? Bomb Arrow. You don't like your neighbor? Bomb Arrow. In Link's Awakening, it is possible to throw bombs and arrows simultaneously by equipping both items and pressing both buttons at the same time. Use this at your own risk. Not available in shops. Apparently, Mario isn't the only one who sneaked into this Zelda game because Link's Awakening could even be considered a crossover. Kirby has been possessed by evil in this game and has multiplied itself in the Eagle's Tower. Link's swords won't do anything to him, so we'll have to use the boomerang or bombs to kill him. Yeah, kill Kirby. Unthinkable. Also, there are some sea urchins on the beach that are actually Gordos from the Kirby series. In the dungeons, there are also enemies that follow every move we make and look like Cappy, but they don't wear the mushroom hat. There's a theory saying that they could be Haniwa figures, like gyroids from Animal Crossing. This is one of those curiosities that makes your head explode. You end the game in all its dungeons and then you find out that each dungeon's map has a special shape. Tail Cave is shaped like a worm, Bottle Grotto is a bottle, Key Cavern is shaped like a key, Angler's Tunnel is shaped like a fin, Catfish Maw is shaped like Slime Eel, it's boss, Face Shrine has a helmet shape, Eagle's Tower is shaped like a tower, no curiosity here, and last but not least, Turtle Rock is shaped like a bicycle. Nah, just kidding, it's shaped like a turtle. The Color Dungeon, meanwhile, is shaped like a t-shirt, a reference to the outfits Link gets in it. Censorship hit Zelda Link's Awakening pretty hard, although in this case we're not surprised because they really went a bit overboard. In the original Japanese game, the hippopotamus posed only with a sheet and a sensual figure covering us if we got close. In the western version, she was made to look more like a hippo and not a curvy supermodel, although the covering gesture stayed the same. In the Nintendo Switch version, there's a reference to this if we approach the hippopotamus, asking us to leave. Also, the mermaid 
mermaid who lost her bra in the original version now loses a necklace, preventing us from seeing what lies underwater. But when Link's Awakening really lost it was on the Game Boy. On the Nintendo Switch, throwing magic power at the Choo Choo results in hints and funny lines from these enemies. But in the past, in the German version, the Choo Choo advised players to always use condoms. We assume this was a joke by the translation team because of the character's particular shape. In Koholin, there's a tomb where we have to bring a lost ghost. Once we finish our job as spectral babysitters, if we sprinkle some magic powder on the grave, the ghost will threaten to put a curse on us. It is fun, but be careful not to do that more times. <laughs> If you're terribly old like me, you'll remember Ward, Super Mario Bros. 2's final boss in the NES, who makes a cameo in Zelda Link's Awakening. He's in charge of teaching Link the Frog Song of Soul, so he's a lot cooler here than in the Mario game. He actually comes from the game Yume Kojo, Doki Doki Panic, from which Super Mario Bros. 2 comes from, but that's another story. Shoplifting is very bad. Whether you're stealing clothes, face cream, or even ideas, you can shoplift in Link's Awakening if you manage to distract the seller, but at what cost? At the price of being called a thief by everyone in the game, literally, every NPC will change our name to thief, and if we make the mistake of returning to the shop, the manager will be waiting for us, finishing us off with a powerful thief-destroying laser beam. There's a character who disappeared from Zelda Link's Awakening in a terrible way. The Game Boy version's photographer mouse jumped off a bridge with one last picture of Link from below. If that that wasn't bad enough, Nintendo took care of burying him and made sure he was dead, and very dead, by completely removing him from the special edition map. At least we know who was his grave digger. <laughs> When Marin decides to join us during the adventure, we can do a number of hidden shenanigans that are only possible at that moment. If we jump into the Tarambo shoes, well, Marin will fall in on us. If we lean over the cliff, Marin and Link will have an existential reflective moment. If we allow Marin to play catch with a hook, she'll slide her claw down to capture the clerk as a prize. There are other funny details such as waiting for us when we enter a dungeon or comments encouraging us to hit the cuckoos. Keep digging in the ground or scolding us for breaking vases. Erasing your save games in Zelda Link's Awakening is quite an experience. Not because hours and hours of your life are lost in a flash, but because of the way it's done. Activating the option requires you to press three buttons simultaneously, each corresponding to a note from Zelda, Ocarina of Time, and Majora's Mask Song of Time. A brilliant reference to redoing the past, which the song did in other games. You probably remember the rabbits at which we have to throw vases, arrows, or anything physically and hurtful that you can think of. The thing is, these creatures have a weakness, the squeaking sound of an ocarina. They can be killed by playing the Ballad of the Windfish, which will make them explode instantly. However, this is not the only song they're sensitive to. If you are on Koholin Island, you probably don't have signal, and to make a phone call, you'll have to go to Grandpa Uriwa's house. If you pick up the phone, it'll automatically call Bucket Mouse, a character you'll never meet face to face. This name comes from a mistranslation of Bucket Mouth, a fish shop close to Nintendo in the city of Osaka in Japan. This strange answer also appeared in Link's Awakening DX for Game Boy. In Taranbo Shores, we can find a merchant called Kapo inside a cave. He will give us the boomerang if we meet his requirements, but the important thing here is the face of this monster. Some have even identified him as Pete, one of the enemies that made Mickey Mouse's life miserable, although the reality is different. This character is a recreation of the Gorilla enemies that appeared in Legend of Zelda. Notice that they throw a boomerang to attack. In the prize machine, we can get a blooper figure, and if we place it in Orira's house, we can read the following. It's a blooper figure. Squids are the hot new thing with kids today. An unmistakable reference to the Splatoon universe, where these trendy squids are always in fashion. 
Prince Richard is one of Link's Awakenings characters with the strangest origins of all. He is actually Kero no Tame Nikane wa Naru's protagonist, a Game Boy video game exclusive to Japan. While Richard may seem like a nobody at first, he even has his own spirit in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. During Link's Awakening development, several ideas were discarded, such as different designs for the Chamber Stones or the in-game shop. Our favorite discarded thing, however, was the game's main theme song, which instead of sounding like this... It was decided to incorporate a fun chorus of singing goblins. <laughs> If we write Zelda in the name of our file, you'll hear a salsa version of the main theme of the saga. On the other hand, if we write Marin, we will hear a curious version of the Ballad of the Windfish. Finally, if we write Totakeke, we will be able to hear Totaka's song. An easter egg that usually hides the composer Kazumi Totaka in the game he works on. In addition, this last song can also be heard in Prince Richard's house if we wait for a while without doing anything. <laughs> The famous Dr. Wright is so busy that he spends the whole day writing letters. What you probably didn't know is that he used to build cities in SimCity on the Super NES. Now he's working part-time on Super Smash Bros. Ultimate as a sidekick creating huge buildings. There is a secret ending in Link's Awakening. In order to access it, we have to complete the adventure without dying. The game keeps track of how many times we have died. So if we reach the end with zero deaths, an extra sequence will appear where Marin smiles at the player just before disappearing forever. And as with every awakening, a dream comes to an end and this curiosity's video is also over. If you want to dream more, however, here you have more videos about video game curiosities. Best regards and see you again! Thank you.